Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle but I mostly talk about business and investments. In today's video, I'm doing something that I've been putting off for a few years now since I started this channel. While I know that this type of video is somewhat a requirement, a necessity for anyone who has a YouTube channel all about finance, I just haven't gotten around to it simply because I'm quite a private person. Making these videos, being in front of you guys, is already a big thing to me. So for me to reveal my portfolio is really a big step for me. I feel like I'm bearing my soul here. A lot of my work, my blood and sweat has gone into this. So excuse me if this took some time. But taking this from my privacy into the public may be helpful for you guys for one reason or another. I am sharing with you my investment portfolio with BPI investments worth 1 million pesos. Are you curious about how my 1 million pesos worth of investments have fared in the last 5 years? Stick around and let's find out. Let's go. These funds were invested between 2017 to 2018. This investment portfolio is mostly comprised of a lot of my earnings during my days as a corporate employee. I actually saved a lot of my money before I got out of corporate knowing that going into entrepreneurship, I would need a lot of reserves. I'm sharing here four BPI investment funds that I've put my money in, and I'll be doing this in the order of lease investments. So let's start off with the Philippine Stock Exchange Fund from BPI ALFM, comprising just about 7.5% of my investment portfolio. I've put in a little over 75,000 pesos, and after five years, its current value is just at 64,000 and 182 pesos. So this fund, after five years, is unfortunately down. It's down by 10,863 pesos, which means that my investment in the PSE fund is down by 14.48%. So unfortunately, I'm still waiting for that day that these funds actually recover. So for the BPI ALFM Philippine Stock Exchange Fund, this is obviously a fund that is completely invested in local equities. As we move on to the second fund, I'm invested in the BPI ALFM Growth Fund. So this is comprised of local Philippine stocks on one hand and on the other hand would be bonds and other fixed income securities. So what I've put here is about 16% of that 1 million investment portfolio. The actual sum is 155,453 pesos. My investment of over 155,000 pesos is now at 123,131 pesos. So this one is unfortunately down by a larger sum and larger percentage. So it is down right now by over 20.79%. So my portfolio reveal, unfortunately, is off to a bad start. Please stick around, it does get better. Moving on to our next fund, still under the BPI ALFM banner. So these first three are actually mutual funds. I put in over 25% of my investment portfolio here. So in actual value, it's 245,253 pesos. So this is where the good news starts. Under this conservative fund, my current investment here stands at 274,828 pesos. So these are returns of over 12.06%. So out of the three investments so far, this is the only one in positive territory. Let's move on to the fourth investment. So for the fourth investment fund, I've put in over 52% of that 1 million portfolio here. So this is actually a bigger bulk of my investments. Why I did this and is it worthwhile, I'll reveal and share with you later on. So this last fund from this BPI portfolio is actually from BPI Wealth. And the fund that I invested in is the US Equity Feeder Fund. I've shared a lot about this fund in many of my previous videos in the past. So just as a refresher, the US Equity Feeder Fund is actually mimicking the S&P 500. So at that time, they only had the US dollar denomination. Right now, they are already accommodating Philippine pesos for it. So what I invested was $9,683.72. So I did this in different tranches. So let's assume that the conversion of the Philippine peso then to one US dollar was at 54 pesos. So at 54 pesos, my dollars invested was at 522,920 pesos. And currently, this investment of just under $10,000 
has a value of $15,168. So it has gains of $5,484. So currently, this invested value is over 830,000 pesos, meaning that my investment of over 522,000 pesos has returns of over 307,000 pesos. So summing all that up and putting together my BPI investment portfolio, my invested amount was actually 998,673 pesos. So forgive me if it's not exactly 1 million pesos. I mean, maybe it's 1 million anyway because of the dollar conversion. So the total value of this portfolio right now is at 1,292,000 and 199 pesos with the losses considered my 998,000 pesos has returns of 293,526 pesos so my returns are just under 30 percent it's at 29.39 percent so what are the key takeaways here and what can i share further with you guys well to be clear i obviously did not put all this money all at once I mean, I had an idea in mind of how I wanted to spread my investments. As you see, I have a bias towards the US and global markets. I've shared this many, many times in previous videos. So you see here that I actually put in more than half of my money in the US equity markets. I feel that there are greater returns when we invest in the global markets, especially in the US, and especially this one since it's investing in the S&P 500. You also see here now why I'm not too bullish in the local market. I mean, currently, even after the five years, my losses are still at over 40,000 pesos for the Philippine Stock Exchange Fund and the BPI ALFM Growth Fund. So you would understand my apprehensions now. Granted that I probably bought at the peak of the local market, but anyway, I was buying this around the same time, again, within the same year, within the same months. So if you see here the comparison between investing in the global markets versus the local markets, I think it was the right strategy to have put in a lot more of my money into the U.S. equity feeder fund. Well, do I wish that I had invested more in the U.S. equity feeder fund? Um, in some ways, yes. I guess what I wanted to uphold with this portfolio is that I kept over 75% of my investment portfolio through the US equities and local markets and I put in 25% of this portfolio in the more conservative money market fund. So as mentioned before, I go by that principle that you should do either a 70-30. In this case, it's a 75-25 split between high-risk equities and bonds, money market funds, and fixed income securities. So for me, this is just how I would always level it out. So the split between 50% in US equities and 25% in the local market, uh, that's my own call. Again, uh, you may have your own preferences, you may have your own beliefs and values that you may want to follow. But for me, this is ultimately what has worked out. So is this a stellar portfolio? Uh, I don't think so. I think this is okay. I could live with doing this and these are the continuing investment principles, the continuing portfolio that I have in the back of my mind. So whenever I'm investing, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, I am looking to do a split between these even as I invest now beyond just the BPI investment funds. So what do you think about all this? Again, I feel like I've just bared my soul here. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing!